Pulisic, let me down one more time today. Listen, I don't do evil, I don't do stupid. I'm not a cultist. I can be a fanboy of somebody, but when it comes to telling the truth, I will say it regardless of the consequences that I can have. That me, that the way I was raised, everybody knows, but that I protect Christian policy every single day. How many fights do I get on social media every day to defend Christian policy? And rightly so. Playing out of position, not playing enough, coming off the bench and try to impress immediately, and that not walking because you have you need like a run of games and all that i've been defending him fighting for him and i will continue to fight for him just the way i did with kalim hassan adoy mason mount hakim zh reese james all those players when you play for me i will criticize you fairly and also, I will protect you. Today, I don't know how to protect Christian Pulisic. Listen, let's make it clear, right? The game meant nothing. But it meant something for me. <clears throat> I was watching the watch along. Watching the watch along? I was doing the watch along on the Global Fan Channel, GSC. In case you don't know that we have a second channel that we do live streaming and uh, watch alongs almost every single day go there subscribe and join the community have your voice heard the telephone is always open for everybody to call anyways i wanted to win this game okay for the feel good factor we have to finish this season with some kind of positivity something to look up to the next season look what they did to me christian politic today he need to take responsibilities it's not all about him though okay not all about him because we didn't create enough clear cut chances but the one that we created christian politic i don't know what he was doing probably he was trying to to do the hollywood things and score i don't know what kind of goal he missed the target completely you know i thought he was offside you know i was thinking yeah it's well you know the linesman is gonna he's gonna raise his flag and i would be like yeah that was an offside but no he wasn't i don't know if he was let me know but even if it was you have to score you know you have to score okay my people so some stats from the game who cares about statistics? Man of the match, James Madison. The voting here, as you can tell, 39.6%. And then Marcos Alonso came second. Rhys James came third. Who really cares about statistics? Who cares? If you go to statistics here, right? Means nothing. The end of the day. 67.6% .6 of possession for what? Nothing. Seven shot on target. Very, very weak shot. Not precise. No nothing. And look at Leicester City. One shot on target. One goal. Tells you everything you want to know. That's why I don't trust those stupid statistics. So we drop uh, two more points at the bridge. It has no consequence in my opinion. But it's just getting to the point where we have to win at the bridge. Stamford Bridge is becoming our boogie ground. And every time Todd Bowley is there, we lose or we drop point. 
Many people are making it as a big deal. It's not a big deal for me. I'm not a superstitious guy, but <laughs> it looks like uh, every time he's there, we lose. Against Real Madrid, we lost. Against Wolves, we drop point. Today, we drop point. At Wembley, when he was there, we lost against uh, uh, against Liverpool. The good thing about it is that he can see what is going on in the team and he need to invest heavily back the manager so he can make his own team. But listen, I am not going to listen to the, the bandwagon. I'm not going to jump into that. You're not going to change 11 players in one window. Okay? Thomas Tuchel need to find a way to get the best out of certain players. Slowly and surely, he's going to get his team. Klopp, it took him at least three years. Guardiola, the same. But they didn't get rid of everybody the same time. They were going slowly and surely, changing players, selling certain players. It's not going to happen one window, my friend. So... Thomas Tuchel was brought to Chelsea Football Club also to get the best out of players. Not only to buy, spend more money to buy players, but also to get the best out of players. That is the difference between good and great. You have to create some systems around certain players in order to get the best out of them. Don't tell me that the entire team, they are just average. No, I don't believe on that. They can really perform in another setup with different combinations. Okay? But today, man, I'm not going to blame Thomas Tuchel that much because we created chances as and as per usual, we don't score goals. Marcos Alonso, congratulations for his wonderful volley. And Rhys James, congratulations for his wonderful pass. We have to defend on our full backs or our wing backs to help us score goals. What is happening to our attacks? Don't blame only everything on the system or on the manager, okay? Because we still create chances. So for me, it's 50 50. Okay? The manager to blame, the players also to blame. Don't tell me that Christian Pulisic missing that chance has something to do with the system. No, regardless of the system you're going to play, if you are if you are one-on-one -on -one with the goalkeeper, you score. That has nothing to do with the system, has something to do with the skill. Anyways, people, I'm going to have to watch the game again and make my player ratings and talk a little bit more about what's going on at Chelsea Football Club right now. Don't forget to subscribe, share, like, join the community, man. Help your brother out. And thank you for everybody that was there during the watch along. It means the world to me. And Todd Boyley, welcome to Chelsea, but help the manager to build the team that nobody want to play against. Mm -hmm.